Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of our Magnum Opus podcast. Today, I have a very special interview to conduct with the one and only T.A. Lauren Culver. And if you don't know Miss Culver, she's actually the daughter of one of, um, don't tell anybody, but one of my favorite faculty, Tom Culver, that works with us. And he is an, a phenomenal cello player and honestly, phenomenal everything player. He, I've watched him one time do the electric music composition, and it was so cool to watch. So, Lauren, Thank you again for taking time out of your day for joining us. And why don't we go ahead and start? Can you tell us a little bit about your background as a musician? So maybe when you started playing, how many instruments you play, any fun facts like that? Yeah, sure. Thanks for having me, Drew. I'm so happy to be here. Um, So I play violin. I started when I was four years old. Um, As Drew said, my dad plays cello. So does my mom. So I think that's how I got started in it. I don't remember, maybe I really wanted to play violin, but I was four years old, so they might have just like pushed me to do it. <laughs> and <laughs> I, I really like it, so I'm glad that they did. Um, when I was seven years old, around then, I started playing piano, and we have a piano teacher that lived two houses down from us, so I just walk over there for lessons. So I played those two until about eighth grade. Then I realized I didn't really like playing piano as much. It doesn't come as easy to me. So, and I wasn't really a good student. I wasn't practicing as much as I should. (laughs) So (laughs) yeah, I wasn't really prepared for my lessons, but I just decided going into high school that I wanted to focus more on violin. And I still play piano. I like playing it, um, but I just focus more on violin now. Yeah, definitely. I think piano is one of those instruments that tons and tons of people just maybe they get started on maybe it's a little bit easier to learn i'm i'm probably not sure but definitely an awesome instrument and um trust me i've definitely not practiced enough sometimes too so that's okay but tell us a little bit about how you got involved in opus and maybe when you got involved in opus yeah so i joined opus as a camper I think it was my summer before eighth grade. I did the junior camp and I had a really good friend who had done Opus in years prior. So she recommended it to me. And so I said, okay, I'll try it out. It was my first music camp and I went there with my friend and I really liked it. I met so many people there, so many good friends and like a lot of connections too. So there's a lot of people that I've seen at like IMEA or different music events. And I thought that was super cool. So I went every single summer as a camper, as many summers as I could, and then I became a TA as soon as I could. So I was a TA for two summers, and I'm planning on coming back again this summer. Oh, wow. You've been here a long time. So summer of eighth grade, so that's like four years as a camper, and then two years as a TA. Wow. (laughs) Yeah, I know. know. I don't mean to make you feel old, but as someone who's been to the camp a couple of years, um, what do you think your favorite arts connection was either to be a part of or to be a TA for? Definitely arranging. So I did arranging like how many years was I camper four or five? <laughs> there was, there was only one time where I wasn't at arranging. I was in videography once. That was really fun. But I think my favorite was arranging. Um, if I don't know if people remember, but I was in a group. It was pretty iconic, I have to say. We did <laughs> <laughs> we did themes from Wii, like the video game Wii. We did that. Um, da, 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 da. Oh so my was, gosh! Yeah, it was kind of wow. fun coming up with like meme songs like that and making all of our friends laugh. <laughs> yeah, I think I remember that. I must have been not, obviously not the TA for arranging, but I remember the group that played that. Oh, memories. <laughs> yeah. Lauren, you're in college now, right? Yes. What are you studying? And maybe tell us a little bit how you chose that major. I am studying music education and violin performance at Roosevelt University. I always knew that I wanted to be a teacher growing up. For a while, I was an English teacher. But around middle school, I really loved music. I, I mean, I always have, but... I guess I realized my love for it in middle school, and I decided, hey, why don't I combine my two favorite things, music and teaching, combine it into one, music education. Um, Also, there's kind of a funny story that goes along with that. Um, In middle school, we had an orchestra teacher, and she wasn't 
the best teacher um, because, <laughs> um, no, she was a good orchestra teacher, but she had a lot of like, like back surgeries. And oh gosh. one day she like didn't show up and she didn't have a sub. So all of us orchestra kids were just kind of sitting outside the room and the band director comes on by and he says, Lauren, the orchestra teacher isn't coming in today. Do you think you could teach the class today? And I was like seventh or eighth grade. And I thought, um, wow. <laughs> yeah, I thought, okay, <laughs> that's kind of weird, but I guess I can do that. So I taught the orchestra class that day. And you know what? I really liked it. So music ed right there. <laughs> Holy cow. That's like an origin story for a superhero. That's <laughs> pretty bomb. So you're studying violin performance right now. I have a question for you. You sure. have obviously played in large ensembles. You've obviously played in smaller ensembles what why chamber music what makes that special or maybe a little bit different for you uh, chamber music i really love first of all because the repertoire there's so many good like piano trios string quartets all of those i love them um also playing with a small group uh, you can play with your friends it's a great way to make good friends playing chamber music um also uh, the way you make music. So instead of orchestra where you're part of a section, it's more of teamwork. Uh, chamber music is also a lot of teamwork, but you also kind of get that solo element of just one person per part. And I really like that. It's a fun way to show off and also kind of work, collaborate with your friends, make music together within the small group. Yeah, no kidding. I think that's absolutely right. And of those small groups, like maybe trio, quartet, quintet, or sextet or septet, do you have like a golden number? Lauren loves to play in four-person quartets or anything like that. Um, I really like string quartets. Um, lately, I've also been really liking piano trios because I just feel like there's such good range. Like you have the yeah. full range of the piano. You have the low cello, yeah. the high violin. <laughs> Such a great combination and also lots of awesome repertoire for that ensemble. Yeah, no kidding. So speaking of performance, I have another little sub question for you. We always like to end our show with asking everybody, faculty, teachers, TAs, everybody that comes on, what is one practice tip that you want to give the audience? So I was thinking about this a lot lately because my teacher recently assigned all of us, all of her college students to do practice logs. And at first I was kind of taken aback by it because I think that's something more like middle school students do. Like uh, mm -hmm. we all probably had to do this in middle school, get your parents' signature, practice logs. So doing that as a college student, I guess I've been kind of going back to that time in middle school, but in more of a constructive way, I guess. I have been planning out my practice, um, writing down how much time I'm spending on every piece. So I guess the main tip that I'm trying to say is to just organize your practice, maybe figure out how much time you have. So I know a lot of us are busy. I know, especially me with the double major, super, super busy. So sometimes I might only have like half an hour to practice for a day. So it's all about kind of spending that time wisely and spreading out the time between each piece. Uh, maybe something is more important or you have a big performance coming up and something is maybe less important, um, maybe like an etude or something, but kind of figuring out how to spend that time effectively based on what you have to work on. Yeah, I think any musician has been there and just trying to figure out maybe how to maximize. All right, it's crunch time. We got 45 minutes. What can I kind of maybe lean less on and maybe not quite skip for a day, but you just know in your head that some parts, they just need more work than others and definitely compartmentalizing those. Absolutely. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Well, Lauren, I really wanted to thank you again for joining us for our show. I had an awesome time with you, and I definitely learned a lot because um, before this, I had no idea that you were going to Roosevelt, so I'm at least glad I figured out what college you were going to. <laughs> Thanks again, everybody, and you can join us next time for another episode of our Magnum Opus podcast. <laughs> <laughs>